What's up everybody? This is Connor and Joshua with Chamber One Tactical. Today we're going to be doing a more of a response and full review video on the Kimber KDS-9C with a rail. Um, we had some dealings with Kimber that we want to tell you guys about and we also uh, did a full review so put a ton more rounds to this gun just to make sure we have you know ev everything that all the knowledge we can have about this gun right. and be able to give it to you guys. So um, we did do a, a first shots and impressions of this gun so you may want to go check out that video first to see that some of the issues that we had with the gun um, and that's on our chamber one tactical page but uh, but let's get into it All right, so we don't want to be too repetitive with you guys. So, like I said, we do have that video out there telling you about the issues we had. I'm going to run over them really, really quick, not very in-depth. Um, one was a grip grip screw that was not... <laughs> Words um, are hard. <laughs> <laughs> one was a grip screw that was not uh, screwing in all the way, so we had to fix that. And then the other was the mag release when we first got it just fell out of the gun. Um, so, not very happy to see that from Kimber, especially with a $1,700 gun. So. Yeah. The first thing we are going to talk about is the response that we got from Kimber because we did re re um, contact Kimber um, about the issues that we had and we're going to go over that really quick about the dealings that we had with them. So um, we ended up sending our information to them, uh, the, the fact that the gun had some issues um, and we were actually contacted by the uh, director of marketing, I believe. Uh -huh. So um, he was very, very nice to us in all of the you know, dealings that we had with him. Um, we, all we did was explain to him the issues that we had. He asked if we wanted to send the gun back and we said, no, we already fixed the issues that we had with the gun. Mm -hmm. We were able to, to, you know, you know, get it working. Um, so he just told us that he would like to, um, pretty much send us some things just for the issues that we had with the gun. Right. Um, so they did end up <clears throat> sending us a optic plate for this gun and a Trigicon RMR. Uh, and it was just for the simple fact that the gun wasn't the way it should have been when we got it. Um, so we do, we are thankful for that. Um, it's still, you know, we still did have issues with the gun. So that is something to say. But the, the person that we dealt with has been very, very kind and very easy to deal with, which we are happy to see. Yeah. And that's why we tell you guys that, yes, it's good to have a good product, but you also want to have a decent company behind it so that if you have issues like we did, somebody's going to be there to make sure that everything is taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what they did. They did, you know, to it, the issues we took care of and they just um, sent us this just for the simple fact that it was, right. it had some problems. Well, and I can say, I also, I work in manufacturing as my job and uh, I realized that mistakes are going to happen, yep. but the way that they responded, we uh, emailed the guy, we called the guy and he, he said that they tracked down where this gun was made. They had meetings on it. Um, they, they wanted to find out what hands actually made this gun yeah. and make sure that it would never happen again. Yep. And so, you know, we got this gun pretty early. So, it, you know, it's a good thing that maybe we were able, allowed to let or we let them know so that they could keep it from happening to maybe one of you guys. Um, but we understand with new guns and new reveals and stuff like that, some issues are going to happen. And we're not here to defend any sort of company. We have no um, affiliation with Kimber by any means. Right. Uh, all we're doing is we're, we're telling you guys the experience we had and how they responded. Right. And actually, I'm going to let Joshua read something to you guys. This is actually an email that we had sent from yeah. the director of marketing. Um, in response, we just asked him, you know, what all... We didn't want to give out his name or anything like that, yeah. but this is just something that we thought was a very interesting thing that he said. Um, if you want to read that real quick. Yeah, so I probably could have memorized this, but <laughs> I'll just say so. Uh, please feel free to call out the fact that each and every customer is paramount to com to Kimber like never before. Um, yeah. So it just shows that it's they didn't just do us any sort of favors or anything like that. They really care about their customer. Yep. Uh, so far, the experience we had was good customer service. I know some some time in the past there have been some bad experiences with Kimber's customer service. Right. Um, but it seems like they've fixed that. You know, just just the personnel and. Um, I think they've even moved where their customer service is. Correct. Um, <clears throat> down south, which we're a lot more friendly. <laughs> so that might be part of it. Uh, but yeah. 
Yeah, and I think um, the first thing that he actually said to us when we contacted him about the issue is, we want you to understand we dealt with the person. We tracked the gun, like Joshua said, we tracked the gun down where it was actually, the quality control check was done. We took care of that, and he, he wanted to let us know that this is not old Kimber. And yeah. he made that statement that we want you guys to understand this is, this is not like old Kimber. This is new Kimber, and this is not what we do. This is not what we're about, and we're going to fix this for you guys. And that's the reason they sent us the optic in the plate. Yeah. It, was, it was not, you know, just a hush-hush kind of thing. They right. wanted they, – they were just wanting to make sure that we were taken care of because we had issues, and I really like that out of a company. So now that we've kind of gone through the dealings with the issues that we had, we'll mm-hmm. go through the rest of the review with the gun. And I guess, you know, we've already talked about the sights and, and stuff like that, but I know I've seen where other people have had some issues with feeding on theirs. Uh-huh. We have not had that issue. Right. Um, it's just not something we've dealt with. Now, when we first, uh, I think the first like 200 rounds we put through it, if you, if the slide was back, if it was locked back, and the only thing you did was just either real quick rack it or just drop the slide, I think we had twice where it mm-hmm. didn't, it didn't go into a battery. Um, it, it pretty much got hung up like that. Yeah. But after that, I, we haven't had that happen again, correct? Yeah. And it never jammed in recoil. No, no. Yeah. It was just when dropping that slide. And I mean, that's sometimes that happens with 1911s because of this really, really steep uh, feed ramp they have yeah. on there. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's we have not had that issue since the first 200, 250 rounds we put through it. So it seems to have worked itself out. Um, and the gun has proven to be a very we polished it with bullets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the gun has proven to be a very accurate gun. And yeah. part of that comes down to the excellent trigger they have in this mm-hmm. gun. This, this trigger is probably one of the better triggers that I've, I've actually shot with on a, you know, nine, 1911 style gun. Um, they did a really, really good job. It's, I don't even think there's really any technical take up. Uh, it just moves just a tiny little bit. And I think what we say about when we actually do have a scale, a trigger scale. Yeah. And I think this one was coming in averaging around two and a half pounds. So I wish I had that with me. I, we may try to add that into, into the footage just so you guys can see that. But a uh, very, very good trigger. The reset isn't pushing your finger out like crazy, but we don't really expect that out of a 1911 trigger. So that is just something to be said. But th- I think the reason the gun is so accurate is because the trigger is so good. Um, yeah, you know, very shootable. Like you like Hunter said, great trigger in it. Um, just reviewing the optic plate and the actual optic it- itself. We did. We have a Trigicon on here. Um, the optic plate is okay. Uh, the mounting it's durable yeah. you know but the only issue i have with it is it's really hard to co-witness so these are the rear sight this is the rear sight this is the optic they're level um so it's going to be really hard to actually co-witness with that and you'd have to have to a pretty tall sight to actually be able to co-witness with well and you'd setup. have to change your front sight too yeah just because it's almost like it's sitting level on top of the slide it's actually not cut down any yeah that would be my one gripe i would say about about the optic plate is mm-hmm. It's the whole point of the whole point of the gun was supposed to be a carry lightweight, you know, not 2011. It's just a double stack 1911 that's mm-hmm. compact that you can carry. Well, not many people want to carry a gun that doesn't co-witness. Right. So I did look through Kimber's website. They did at one point. Ha- I didn't see it in stock or not. I didn't really see it listed on their website as of right now. But they did have a kit that was 120 bucks where it gave you. Um, uh, rear sight that was taller and you you would change out your front sight and i mean it's if you're paying 1700 dollars for a gun you really don't want to have to keep paying money for all these extra add on i mean it's just it's not the best you you would you would hope that they could just find a way to mount the optic straight to the gun like so many other guns are doing right now mm-hmm. and not have to deal with getting different sights and and doing all that kind of jazz so um, this optic plate is a hundred bucks, I believe on their website. So if you buy this and you find that out, then you got to spend another 120 bucks on the kit to change your sights out and, and do all that. So yeah. if I had anything I would, I would suggest to Kimber is get rid of the, try and if you can try to mount the optics straight to the gun, 
And I know that's not a, And we've always, had that complaint about a couple other companies. Yeah. We're not just picking on Kimber. I know it's means. not always where it's possible to do that. I know 1911s yeah. are hard. Um, but it, even still, if you can get where your plate can somehow sit a little bit lower so that you can have a – you don't have to buy this whole other kit to do co-witnessing, which mm -hmm. is very important to most people that carry, right. um, especially when you're running an optic. But the optic, like you said, stayed on there. We didn't have any issues with the plate wiggling loose or the optic wiggling loose. I think it looks awesome <laughs> on here. I think, yeah. you know, the gun in, in general is probably one of the best-looking guns on the market right now. Yeah. Um, it is a very good-looking gun, and Kimber has always had – very good looking guns um which is part of the reason i own some of them because i think they're <laughs> really really good looking guns but um like we said as it comes as far as this gun goes we have not had any other issues as far as reliability which is very important mm -hmm. um so we're glad to see that out of the gun and uh, at this point i'm going to ask you now that we've done a full review on it we've had uh -huh. as many rounds as we put into most of our guns when we do full reviews um, would you recommend this gun to someone and why would you recommend it to them and why would you not if you're not? Yeah, so I know you asked me the same question when we did the first shots and impressions, but I think my opinion has changed just a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. just in the full review. Um, so besides some of the issues that me and Connor mentioned, all the other features about the gun are actually pretty good. Like the slide serrations, the grip, the grip angle, the trigger, uh, the safety is very tactile, you know, stuff like that. All the other little features don't bother me at all. It's just those couple little things. And, of course, this is a $1,700 gun uh, if you want the rail version. Right. And I will say this gun has a place, but not in my gun safe. So I'm very much so I look in for value and what am I getting out of a gun versus what am I actually spending. I'm not one that's going to overspend just because it's a cool-looking gun. It might be a little... A uh, couple little extra little features that make it a little bit better. I typically like to go for value. So, you know, maybe Canic or something like that, right? Yeah. Something a little bit more practical. And then you don't have to worry about it as much if it's your everyday carry. You can throw it around, you can throw it in your truck. You're not going to worry about scratching it. Um, so $1,700, I could probably spend about three, uh, three other guns with what I would spend on this. Sure. Uh, but I'm not going to say that this doesn't fit somebody else's gun safe. Because for someone that does have a little bit of extra change that maybe doesn't think as practical, they just want a really cool gun, they're more of a collector or just uses it for plinking, uh, they might carry this on occasion, uh, this would be a great firearm, yeah. you know. But for me, this isn't something that I would choose. But again, just like the uh, equalizer we did, I do see this gun for other people. Sure. Just not for me. Yeah, it has a place, right? Uh -huh. Every gun has a place for the most part, except right. for high point. <laughs> well, it's got a place. It's for criminals. It's in the garbage. <laughs> um, but no, I I kind of agree with you. I could see owning this. I don't. I, I think this has room in my gun safe because some guns I just like to get out. There's just certain guns that I get out and I just look at and I, I clean and I go and, and when we're not doing super quick shooting and I just want to go and have just a simple range time, which we do every once in a while. We'll just mm -hmm. come out and not shoot so fast and just just casually shoot if that's a thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is the gun that I would probably take and do that. This this is definitely something that I would want in my range bag to go out and shoot. Now, I do agree with you with the $1,700 price tag that it's a little harder for me to want it in my, in my collection because like you said, uh, there's a lot of other guns you can get while spending the same money. You could get two, three guns with that same price. Um, Just think of how many daggers you could buy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I do really, I do think when you break it down to what else is on the market that is like this and what are they selling for, this is actually a pretty yeah. good price. When you look at, what is it, um, Wilson Combat, Staccato, Staccato yeah. this is a good bit cheaper than all those, getting close to half on some of them. So yeah. I think for what this gun is, it's a great value. Um, and for the the actual performance that we've had out of it, I think it's a great gun. I I, I would... At this point, I would trust my life with it. We haven't had any malfunctions with it. It's accurate. It shoots great. Um, so, you know, I think this is a great gun if you're looking for something that you can have a little bit more money in because there's always somebody out there that wants to expand their collection and try and get a little bit higher end gun because we all, we all get to a certain point where we're done with budget and we <laughs> want to get something a little nicer. I think this is kind of the perfect thing to get if you're in that in that stage and, and you're shooting where you want something that's just more like a Cadillac or something like that, this is what I'd go with. Um, 
So, you know, that's just our personal opinion on it. Obviously, everybody has different opinions. So, um, and we know there's better carry options out there. Yeah. But there's always room for other things in your collection. Yeah. Because if you're always thinking about like, oh, is it practical? Is it better? Then nobody would own six shooter revolvers. But when you pick up one, they're still fun to shoot. Right. They're fun to have in your collection. It's great to have variety when yeah. you go shooting. You yeah. will get tired of a Glock. You will get tired. You know, it's nice to have stuff like this where you can just get a little something a little bit nicer and just have fun with it. Yep. But uh, but that's the review we've got on the Kimber KDS 9C with a rail. You guys have any questions about the dealings that we had with Kimber or anything like that or anything you see on the gun, just let us know down in the comments. If you have any suggestions for future content, let us know. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and like and share, and we'll catch you next time.